You've all heard the Democrats talk about raising tax rates. They always say two things. We're going to raise taxes on the rich, make the rich pay their fair share, whatever their fair share is, you know, their fair share of their money. Uh, but at the same time, they're always assuring us, but don't worry, we're only going to tax the rich. We're not going to tax the middle class. That is a bold faced lie. It's a, a, a pile of, uh, I went to a Catholic school. I had a teacher who used to call it bull dinky. It's bull dinky. It's bull crap. It's bull. You know what? And in this video, I'm going to explain the two reasons why. It is true that in the 1950s, actually into the early 60s, the highest tax rate, income tax rate in the United States was about 90%. That is true. But it's also true that in 1960, in the election between Nixon and John F. Kennedy, Kennedy didn't campaign on a reduction of tax rates, but he said the economy needed to get going because it was slowing down. And he was going to look at tax rates. He said they might go higher, they might go lower. Now, of course, nobody in their right mind, when the economy is slowing, raises tax rates. So essentially, basically what he was saying was, if he was elected, he would lower taxes, which they did. It took, it took about three, or four, three years, but they eventually cut the top tax rate from 90 down to like 63 or something like that. So that's the first thing you have to understand about these high tax rates. Yeah, things looked pretty good in the 50s, but they weren't that good. And the Democrats at the time believed that lower tax rates would stimulate the economy. Now, I need to explain something here. Most of you have heard this idea that lower tax rates can actually yield greater tax revenue because of an increase in business activity. That was infamously uh, named by George Bush the first, voodoo economics, something that Reagan was pushing. This idea of, of supply side economics, that by actually lowering rates, you'd bring in more money because activity would increase. There's a simple test to see if you're actually a crypto supply side economist. And, and it's, it's very easy. And the question is this. If you learn tomorrow that every dollar you made at work would be taxed 100%, would you still go to work? If the answer is no, you're a supply side economist. You know, if they said only you take 99 cents out of every dollar you earn, would you go to work? I wouldn't. What about 98 cents, 97, 96, 95, 94? You can see where I'm going with this. You know, at some point, pe people will go to work because they need to work. You know, it could be 30, 40, 50, 60. Some people went to work when it was 90%. But maybe they didn't work as hard. But unless you're willing to say, I could be taxed 100%. If, if you know, President Bernie Sanders said, my fair tax rate was 100%, I would still go to work and do my job. I work overtime for nothing just to get things done. Unless you're that person, and there might be a few morons out there like that, I don't know. You believe in supply side economics. It's not really that complex of an idea. It's very simple, but not simplistic. Kennedy and the Democrats who worked with him were supply side economists. They believe that by bringing down tax rates, which they did by cutting them 30%, would stimulate greater economic activity. So instead of getting 90% of a lower business activity, you'd get 60% of a much higher business activity and you'd end up bringing in more money because of this supply side idea. The second problem with what the Democrats are saying is that we have a progressive tax system. You know, if the rates go up as you earn more money, the more you make, the more they take. The less you make, the less they take. And, and that's fine if you like a progressive tax system. That's what we've got. But you have to understand with a progressive tax system, there's a domino effect. If you cut rates, they have to be cut all the way down. 
I mean, when the Kennedy administration ultimately cut rates from 90 to 60 at the top, you also had to cut the rates of the people who were making 80 down to 50, and the people who were making 70 down to 40, et cetera. So you have to go all the way down the scale. You just can't cut the rate at the top. You've got to change all the rates because it's a progressive system. And there has to be internal coherence to the tax system. The same is true when you raise taxes. I mean, you can't say you can't pick a point at the top and say $1 million. They pay 90%. And the people who make you know, uh, $900,000 only pay 30%. I mean, that's absurd. Who's going to work past the $900,000 mark? A progressive system needs to be coherent from top to bottom. If you raise the taxes at the top, you have to raise them from the bottom up. If you cut the taxes at the top, you have to cut them all the way down. It's inevitable. You can't have tax rates where people making $100,000 are paying a, a smaller rate than uh, you know, people making 50. It just doesn't make sense. There has to be an internal coherence to the whole thing, a balance. And you can see that if you look at the 1960 tax rates and the 1963 tax rates. They just didn't cut the top rate. They cut all the rates. Otherwise, I said, you'd have people near the top paying more than the people who had been at the top who are now paying less, and that would make no sense. There'd be no internal coherence. It would be moronic. So when progressives say, we're only going to tax the people at the top, they cannot do that without totally screwing up the tax system. If they raise the rates from the top people to 70, 80, or 90 percent, they have to drag all the other rates up with them, which means the middle class and even the poor are going to have their taxes raised. And when they tell you that they're not, they are lying, lying to you. Okay, these are the tax brackets for uh, basically 1960. And I'm going to use, just to be consistent, the married filing jointly brackets. And you can see that the top rate down here is 91% if you're making $400,000 a year. Now, if adjusted for inflation, that would be about $3.2 million now. But you also notice that these brackets, and there are many of them, they go down gradually. Each one is about somewhere around three points apart. And when you get all the way down to the bottom, the lowest bracket, making from $1 to up to $3,999, you pay 20%. And then it goes up to 22% between from 4 to 8, 26, 30, and it goes on like that. Now, that's a progressive tax scheme. Now, the problem with this is, well, there's two problems. One is state taxes. Remember, back in 1960, most states had no income tax. And the few that did, it was very small. For example, uh, if you take California today, the top income bracket in California, which would be these people, would are charged 13.3%. In New York, it's 8.8%. So basically, if you had this in as a federal tax bracket, between federal and state taxes, you'd be paying more than 100% of your income. Now, they would have to deduct the... Uh, state tax off the federal or something like that, but you're still pushing 100% of your income. So while they had a 91% tax rate in those back in 1960, you didn't have the uh, uh, state taxes. Where, where I grew up in Philadelphia, you also had a, uh, at one point it got up to almost 5% city wage tax on top of a state tax. So that's another problem. But the other problem is just this idea of, of uh, a progressive taxation. So you can't just have, you know, this pe these people pay 90 and the next people pay 20 percent. That, that's just not going to make any sense in a progressive tax system. Basically, when you start at the top or the bottom and work your way up or down, you're going to have to have progressive rates. That's the way it works. And they, they did lower these in the uh, 1960s, I think into the 60s or low 70s or something, the, uh, the rate. Uh if you look at, this is uh, 2019, and we go to married filing jointly, you can see that the top bracket now is 
percent and the lower bracket is basically 10 percent whereas in the previous bracket the people who are making the least money up to two thousand dollars are paying 22 percent in the current bracket you don't get up to 22 percent unless you're making like seventy nine thousand dollars now again that would be about ten thousand dollars adjusted for in inflation more or less now what i've also done this is a spreadsheet and what I've done in this spreadsheet is these are the uh, our, our current uh, brackets for different different uh, salaries, and I've I've just picked these just as round numbers: uh, nineteen thousand dollars, fifty thousand dollars, one hundred thousand, one hundred fifty, two hundred, and six hundred thousand. And this is the corresponding current tax rate. Now, of course, there are deductions and everything, but I'm not looking at any of those things. So that what you pay is you know, that percentage. And, and of course, you would pay 10% on everything up to 50, 12% on 50 to 100, like that. These are the 1960 brackets, where the brackets change, adjusted for backwards for inflation. So basically, the 19,000 bracket today would be $2,160 in 1960. 50,000 today would be 5,686 then. 600, 200,000 today would be 22,744 adjusted for inflation. So if you look at these salaries over here, these wages being earned, and you apply 1960 rates, these are the taxes you would get. So in other words, in the lowest bracket, your taxes would double. They'd go from 10 to 20. In this bracket, your taxes would go from 12 to 22. This bracket, they'd go from 22 to 26. Not that much more. But this bracket, they go from 22 to 34, and then from 24 to 38, and 37 to 65. Now, that's a pretty large increase all the way up and down. Yeah, the, the $600,000 person or family is earning or paying an extra 28%, but the poor guy working at McDonald's is, is paying an extra, uh, his taxes are being doubled. And you can see the, the increase here in amounts. This is for each within each bracket. So the first bracket, if you pay 10%, you know, you're paying $1,900 and then you pay 49. So if you were in the $100,000 bracket, you would pay basically an extra almost $9,000 in taxes. If you're at the $200,000 bracket, you would pay almost $30,000 in taxes. And at $600,000, you're paying $140,000. So what when they're talking about raising the rates and raising taxes on the rich so they pay their, you know, quote, fair share, unquote, because of the way things work, they have to, you know, they, they have to adjust the whole system. They can't have these aberrations where you jump from here to here and, and there's nothing in between. It would it would distort how people operate. You can't do that with a progressive system. It just doesn't work. So that, that's basically what I'm saying is you can't fiddle around with the rate at this end and not play around with it at a rate at this end. Otherwise, you get all kinds of distortion in the income tax law and how it's effectively, you know, works out uh, for individuals and for families. Hopefully, I've, I've shown you that, you know, if you look at taxes in 60 and today, I mean, you can see that what they're proposing, the way they're proposing it at least, is totally unworkable. It's not, it, it can't happen that way. They're gonna to have to drag up all the rates. So you need to understand that when they tell you they're gonna push the top rate to 70, 80, or 90%, but not tax the middle class, they are lying. It is that simple, there's no doubt about it. Let me know what you think in a comment. Uh, you can subscribe to the channel, hit the notification button so you know when I post new videos. Give the video a thumbs up if you got something out of it. And in the meantime, you know, share it with your friends, stand firm, and keep fighting. Keep fighting.